particular video here flows on quite nicely from the previous one, okay? I'm just gonna just tidy things up a little bit here. I'm just gonna get rid of this particular measure. And I'm also going to um, just update a few things here. So I'll just create a visualization out of our sales, right? So out of our sales. And I'm also gonna create a visualization via our products here. I'm gonna grab my product name and we'll have a look at um, how many transactions we had. And we'll turn that into a visualization as well. Okay. Now, how, you know, if you think about these formulas, right? So these formulas are not difficult they're, they're classified as what I, what I would classify as relatively simple. You know, they're just calculating something, you know, we can easily see from our data that we can calculate, right? There's nothing too, too difficult about it. But how do we get so many different results? And how do these results change based on selections that we make? So I can select something inside of, of a visualization here, and you'll see that I'm getting, you know, um, different uh, results within this particular visualization. Like how is that all happening, okay? And you'll see that obviously this is demo data. It doesn't look like the, the purchasing of products was dispersed as much as it, as, as, as much as it should be. Um, but that's okay. I mean, what, what we can do, let's have a look. Let's see if we can maybe actually do customers here and see if that actually brings a bit more dispersion. Yeah, okay, cool. So one thing we might want to do, um, this is just a bit of a side note, is that we might want to change the interactions between our visuals to be able to see see things a bit clearer. And so I'm just going to go to Format and go Edit Interactions and then change to this here. And then if I make a selection now, I'm actually seeing just that particular customer's sales. Okay. So I guess the, the thing is like, how is this occurring? Now, it's all to do with the data model, right? everything that we may place a filter up um, here is filtering down here to our any measure any virtual calculation that we are doing o over this particular table right because you've got to remember all of our tables are basically referencing that one so we're referencing the sales table here uh, in total transactions we're referencing the sales table here as well um, same in total quantity same in all of these functions they're all being done in this table down here but we can then filter and we can filter them um, at the same time by any of our lookup tables that have a, a, a you know a relationship down to our sales table and that's how we can layer on multiple of these selections every if, if we really want to okay but it's I guess my, my my key point here is how important it is to understand that both of these work together okay so what have I also, maybe I want to use my state here, and I want to um, grab my sales by state, um, right? And you'll see here that I'm getting a visualization here, but maybe maybe I want to turn this into a donut chart, right? And I can dive into my sales per state this way, okay? And then I might also, again, want to edit interactions by these, and I can turn that off as well. And so now I can really drill in to insights based on further filtering or context that I'm creating up from my lookup tables all at once, right? And they're all happening at it. They're all placing a different filter that is filtering down here, filtering the appropriate column in the background. And so just think about all these different layers of filters that could be applied to different columns here. You know, we're, we're at the moment we've got a location and a customer and also a date um, filter as well that are all um, being applied to individual results here or to every calculation for every result here. The formula itself has not changed at all. It's just the one formula. You know, in Excel, you would have many different formula looks because of the cell references would all be different. But here, the formula is exactly the same. It's just the filtering the over, the, that we have overlaid on this particular function, which is creating all these great results for us. And, and it's we're able to do it really, really quickly. Okay? And so this is, this is, you know, when you combine the data model and DAX formula, that is where you can create just incredible insights and 
huge volumes of insights really, really efficiently. And that's what should get you really excited. Okay, so that's all I want to cover just here. Just just the importance of looking at both of these at the same time because you can't you can't really do one without the other. You know, the data model itself doesn't actually showcase much. You need to overlay DAX on it. But then using DAX without a good data model um, is not going to produce results in any um, you know, good results. You're not you're not going to be able to get the the great analysis that you might be looking for. Okay, let's move on to um, in the next section. We're going to cover the most a really really important topic, maybe the most important topic um, around this context that I've been talking about a little bit. But I'm really going to dive into it a little bit more to give you a lot more clarity on it. Okay, let's move into it.